but that wasn't important. The important point, he says, for such exercises um, of analysing and covering up the page with the Grandmaster's notes is to perfect the technique of analysis. OK, so the mate in five is knight takes e5, check. Um, so that bishop's now pinned, so say um, queen takes e5, there's rook takes g7, check, beautiful, because that bishop is pinned. Um, so king e6, and now queen takes g8, king d6, and now check. And in this position, there's not many too, too many moves for that, queen takes f6. Um, but white can't afford to just take that queen because you know this this pawn's about to queen with check or white's about to be mated. There's actually a lovely move, queen d5, mate. So there's a crunching mate in five here, believe it or not. After in this continuation of a2, so I'm going to quickly promote that variation a2. So we see here that this knight h7, followed by this knight takes e5. And in this position, you might be wondering, well, what if king e7 trying to make a run for it? Again, there's this crunching rook takes g7, because bishop takes, queen takes, king e8. And now, oh, there's a lovely move. There's a mate in two. I wonder if you can spot the mate in two. There's also a simpler mate in three. But um, the mate in two is quite sweet. If I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay, the mate in two. Check. Queen takes. Oh, actually, queen d7 or queen takes f8. There's, there's, there's two choices here. So that's that's a mate or not a mate. That's a mate, queen d7. So what are we seeing from this position? Um, we, we're, we're basically, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm, you know, the game is this queen side attack versus king side attack and it reached the climax you know where white had to play accurately and white did actually as it turned out play an accurate continuation to a certain extent it was just that after a2 um white went wrong now that knight g5 is actually much stronger than it looks um in fact uh Ripka was giving um queen e7 at a lower depth as being a reasonable move here but um, you know, was changing its mind that this is actually quite strong for white because of knight e6 check, and if king e8, um, now rook takes g7, and this is better for white apparently. So it's it's a razor sharp position, and it's it's because this pawn, you know, is on the verge of queening. There's, you know, very it's a very interesting example, and um, I just want to say a few things which I've noticed from from researching Kotov. Um, there's an Amazon review, and also someone's also commented that there was a study called. Um, sorry, by Adrian de Groot, who I believe played for his Olympiad team. And he um, was doing scientific experiments, and it wasn't, you know, in, um, you know, grandmasters doing these trees of analysis, but rather the, their speed of intuition, they, they, they had natural um, patterns which had evolved much better than um, masters, and masters had better patterns than amateurs. So it was in this pattern recognition or chunking mechanism that they were able to recognize and process more quickly standard configurations. Um, so that's a different theory to cut off, that it's not this um, you know, bean counting process perfecting that, which is the skill of the grandmaster, or, or rather the characteristic of the grandmasters. And de Groot's angle on that is also supported by Susan Polgar's uh, video on Google, um, about um, you know the human mind and, and pattern recognition, which also brings into this the view this this chunking. So this is a real contradiction to really um, what Kotov is saying in how grandmasters think. Um, if the grandmasters' thought processes are based on chunking, then they've really acquired lots and lots of pa patterns um, from early you know in the, in their career. And a lot of grandmasters have started early as children, so they're acquiring all these thousands of patterns. And it's the chunking mechanism, not the brute force of calculation, which distinguishes them. 
Um, not only that, they would have also required tons and tons of opening theory and end game, um, you know, positions where, you know, the schematic um, uh, movements required. You know, they would have learned a lot of them. So really, um, I, I, you know, for for me, you know, that's more in line with the assets of the human being to be based strategically on on an intuition. But um, in sharp positions, yeah, we we need to accurately analyze, you know, either to to make sure we win or to make sure we're not going to uh, lose. Especially, you know, this this is a time bomb situation. But in the other examples, there were very you know delicate night sacrifices which needed very precise calculation. But I think in general, you know, the, the chunking uh, theory holds up very well because also if you look at internet blitz servers that you know like the internet chess club um, the grandmasters are often the highest rated at one minute chess and three minute chess and again you know that for me uh, shows that you know they have very very fast pattern recognition um, as you know as well as very good opening theory and end game knowledge so so these other angles c cast um, a different view on what Cotter was trying trying to say um, you know, with these trees of analysis. Um, also, on the forum of Chess World, I posed the question, you know, about Kotov's book, and Dan Quigley um, kind of implied that it's great more for correspondence chess to do trees of analysis because you've got lots of time. You, you can luxuriously have the time to sort of note down different variations, different candidate moves. And... Um, then another great um, forum poster on the Let's Play Chesscom site, Tartakoa. Um, his nickname's similar to Tartakoa, who's, who's a very famous um, player. He's, he's, he quoted from John Nunn's um, uh, Secrets of Practical Chess book. And John Nunn has said at least three different things about why Kotov's you know, analysis method might be inefficient. Um, I think I'll leave a discussion of those three things in more detail in the next video. But, okay, in a quick nutshell, though, he, Nunn says you can prototype candidate moves very quickly. You don't have to do the full subtree. You can get a very quick idea if a move is winning or not, so you don't have to waste so much time. The second thing, you know, you can pick up resources and ideas in one line, which would mean you would have to redo the other lines from scratch again. So I think it's good to sometimes just try and digest the resources in the position first before committing to, to any... You know documentation of lines, and the third thing, and this is also noted by Rousen as well as Nunn, is that in some positions you only pick up you know like ten moves ahead what you'll need because you'll see that combination is not working, and so you need to solve the issue why that combination isn't working, and that creates this very interesting first move that you would have needed to play, but to have listed that first move as your candidate moves, it would have looked absurd, so because this is this is like um, a problem solving move. Uh, which is an issue with a combination. So there's these three things which are picked up on by John Nunn. And there's also the, the Adrian de Groot angle, which matches with Susan Polgar's um, video, where you know, My Brilliant Brain, if you look that up on, on Google video, you'll see the whole episode of My Brilliant Brain. Uh, that really emphasizes the chunking angles. And it's also noted by, by one of you that Agent Groot is very scientific because he's aiming to falsify his conclusions, which is the scientific approach to this whole business. I.e., you know, you, um, you're really, you know, you're conducting experiments and you're accepting the results. You're, 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 you're doing it scientifically. And that was his findings. You know, Agent Groot, he found that, you know, the masters were much stronger intuitively. And when put in random positions, uh, you know, when the pieces like Fisher Random type positions, then the Grandmaster's advantage over, over the Masters was far less than more common positions. So anyway, I hope there's um, um, some stimulation there for your own thinking. And, you know, please come back in the comments. I'm really enjoying this looking at Kotov in a lot more detail than I ever had before. So please leave your comments there on YouTube. Thanks very much.